I have been getting achievements for a long, long, long time. More than half of my life I've sat my ass down chasing the gamer numbers. And I thought it'd be a good idea to look back over the last few years at every game I ever played and some of the achievements along the way. So here we're actually kicking it off with a bit of a spoiler, the Spyro Reignited trilogy. I just finished this over the past few days and there will be a video on it. It should be the next one I release but I've been having some trouble on the editing side so we'll see what happens. I'm sure it'll be solid though so look forward to that. Fallout Shelter I've been playing on my own time. I really don't think it'd make a good video but I've been enjoying it and I'm definitely not using any time manipulation strategies to progress faster. That would be a gross misuse of the time zone function of the Xbox settings that would betray the sanctity of this beautiful game. Seriously though, there's one achievement I'm really not looking forward to. If you've played this game you know what I'm talking about. Collecting 20 legendary dwellers. So there are two or three you can get during the quest they give you, but after that you're left with the terrible rate of the lunchbox or the even worse rate of radio rooms or just finding people in the wasteland. It's gonna suck, but I'm determined to complete this game without spending a cent. We've got Celeste, one of my favorite videos, and you lovely people seem to agree. Some people were a little unhappy with my decision to skip chapter eight because I found it boring. I, I don't even know why I hated it so much. I guess I was just having a bad day. I played the B-side and C-side just fine, so that's probably what happened there. But for the few people who don't think I earned the win, don't worry. I've got plans for a couple more Celeste videos and one will be beating every chapter without dying once. And there might even be a twist. Clicker Heroes, same thing as Fallout Shelter. I'm just playing this on my own time to relax and get achievements. And I'm definitely doing it legitimately. This is a reasonable, realistic amount of monsters to kill. No reason to expect anything nefarious. No video on this as well. Why would there be? I'm literally cheating the whole time, allegedly. Slime Rancher is such a good game. Oh my god. I got all the achievements when it first came out, and I did it again for the channel. It's cute, it's laid back, everything you need to just relax. And it's got a few pretty rare achievements in there if you want to pad your true achievement score. I heavily recommend this, and the second game will probably have some equally fun achievements on the full release. This was such a good remake. RE4 did so much justice to the original while having its own identity in there. I am a little annoyed that Gun Fanatic became so much easier after I beat it. When I did it, you had to beat it on professional without using any bonus weapons, but now you just have to get all S ranks for mercenaries. So that's kind of annoying, but I won't hold it against the game. They didn't stack the S plus achievements though, and for that reason, this game is dead to me. Resident Evil 8, also a fantastic Resident Evil. Capcom's really been on a hot streak recently, but I need to talk to you fine people. Back in my RE8 video, I told you after getting the first four S ranks, I ended up buying the DLC to use the DLC characters, which made mercenaries a joke. And all that's true, but it really didn't sit right with me. If you don't know what I'm talking about, mercenaries is a time attack horde mode in RE8. There are four normal levels of mercenaries, then there are four hard modes of those levels. More aggressive enemies, stronger enemy types, bigger health bars, way more damage. The hard ones felt impossible, so I leveled the playing field with Lady Dimitrescu. So, at some point this year, not making any promises on exactly when, I will get an S rank or better on every map only using Ethan so that I can say I did it the hard way and earn the achievement. Crash Insane Trilogy, beautiful collection of games. If memory serves, I think one was the hardest, two had definitely had the most annoying moments, but one was consistently the hardest for me. And then three was the most inventive, but rarely difficult. I also had a video for all three individually, and it's where I was doing the most experimenting with my editing style. So if anyone wants to watch all three of those back to back, let me know if it's jarring going from one video to another. RE6. This game is a piece of shit. Bold opinion, I know. These were the dark ages of Capcom. I had designs on making a video out of this, but it's just such a slog to get through. I remember having a great time playing with a friend when it came out though. I actually remember beating all the campaigns on No Hope Co-op, and when we got to the first quick time event, it was actually impossible for us to do. So we had to go back and change our skills just to beat a fucking QTE. So I might ask a friend or maybe even another YouTuber to see who's willing to go through this with me. Other than that, I'll just suffer in silence over the next few months until it's finally done. RE2 Remake, more proof that Capcom is in a golden age. I just got the achievement for completing No Way Out, although I did get everything the first time I played it. Despite how rare this achievement is, it really isn't that bad. If I remember right, I died 
died twice and beat it after 45 minutes. And then in an effort to make the video more interesting, I tried beating it while firing the pistol 60 times or less, 35 minutes. I've mentioned this to a few people, but I hate this video. Nothing really came out right and it wasn't a good enough story to release it, but past stubborn me didn't want to have wasted the time I put into recording and editing. So out it went. Seems like everyone who watched it liked it though. So there's that. I'll almost certainly do a video on the full game, but the game's pretty short, so I'll probably spice it up somehow. Uh, let me know if you've got any thoughts on that in the comments. And then we round it out with RE7. This game might actually have the best DLC I've ever played. I love all of it so much, maybe not necessarily daughters. I've already done a video for Jack's 55th birthday, very rare achievements by the way, but I'm also planning on four more RE7 videos, cause I'm a greedy boy. Ethan must die, end of Zoe on Joe must die, maybe 21 depending on how much I can get out of it, and then I'll wrap it all up with every other achievement in the game. Despite my high praise of the others, I think 7 might actually be my favorite in the series. Oh, and I skipped right over Dead Space, which I guess is par for the course. I did get every achievement, but it was pretty easy. Don't get me wrong, the achievement for beating the whole game on permadeath was stressful pretty much all the way through, but I was always in pretty good shape and the game just kind of ended. So that's why you never got a video on this. And if you're ever going to, it'll have to be some kind of challenge run to make it more interesting. And speaking of Dead Space, we've got Dead Space 2, which is my very first video. It's actually my second, but we don't talk about that one. And it isn't actually on the list because I beat hardcore on Steam. Believe it or not, when I started this channel about getting achievements, I didn't own an Xbox. Fake it till you make it, right? I beat the whole game with only three manual saves, no auto saves, way less ammo and health, and enemies hit like a truck. Except, I used all three of my saves on the very first save station of the game. So I had to one shot the whole campaign. It was hard as hell, it sucked, and it was exactly what I wanted out of the Dead Space remake's hardest difficulty. And this is actually the end of the achievement list. I made a new account for the channel, and because of that, I only have Sir, <clears throat> oh god, I'm gonna be sick. But this just in, I have another account. And as opposed to the cringe 13,000, 14,000, I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. We have the Chad 189,000 gamer score. No one has more gamer score than this. But before we get into the old list, I have an announcement to make. Wolfenstein 2, The Evil Within, Hollow Knight, Crash 4, Devil May Cry 5, 100,000 gamer score, and a sixth game chosen by you. I will complete all of these by the end of the year, and if I don't, I will get started on a video getting every single achievement in Halo Master Chief Collection. 700 achievements, as much as 1,000 hours of my time on the line. Just put the hardest Xbox games you can think of in the comments below. The four games with the most likes will be put in a poll where you find people will pick the winner. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. You wouldn't want to miss making the final decision. This list kicks off with Rocket League, and even though it's at the top, I've been playing this off and on for years. I wonder how big of a gap the achievements have. Yeah, almost four years between the first and most recent achievement. I always play this with the same friend. We've both been pretty busy recently, but whenever we get a minute to sit down and play together, it's always Rocket League. So that one has a pretty special place in my heart. RE7 again, except I finished pretty much everything except Joe Must Die and the Horde Mode DLC on Hard. And hey, all the more reason to get Joe Must Die. I didn't even do it the first time. Halo MCC, baby. Probably the most I've played any game. It's so much fun going for the different achievements, even though I sucked ass at the lasso runs, which is basically being on the highest difficulty with a bunch of modifiers that make the game harder, including one that has you restart the entire level every time you die. All the different campaigns, playlists, online achievements, any direction you go is just filled with achievements. It's a wonderland. I'd love to do some co-op lasso sessions. I could see those easily being some of the most fun videos I've done. And who knows, maybe I'll do a video on all 700 achievements. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is easily my favorite Souls game. I haven't played uh, Bloodborne or Sekiro, so I can't comment on those, but this one is just so exceptional. I'd always get that huge cleaver weapon and run through the game with it, and the Irithyll straight sword is, uh, sometimes. I never paid attention to builds, so I'm sure mine suck ass, but it was so damn good. And I basically perfected the Dragon Slayer armor fight, so much so that I'd, uh, put my summon sign in front of the boss to help people, and I really understand why Let Me Solo Her does it. It's 
really satisfying. The only reason I didn't finish it is because I didn't have the chutzpah to get all the collectibles. The collectibles in Souls games usually require you to play two or three times. One example is there are different versions of the same ring that are stronger, and those stronger versions only appear on your second or third playthrough of the game. But I think this would be a pretty good one to stream, which I do want to start doing more of in the future. Oh, Gems of War. Oh, I played this like a little goblin, man. I spent, uh, I'm not even joking, I spent hundreds of dollars on this game. I played it for almost 200 hours, and I still don't have a completion to show for it. Oh, what a disgrace. It is a very fun game, and I would recommend it if you have better restraint than me. Oh, that's right! The treasure hunt! Okay, so this game is a turn-based match game to attack the other team's troops with yours, and like all the different colors are different mana types. But there's a bonus mode called treasure hunt where you match pieces to get more valuable pieces. Match three or more bronze to make silver, silver to gold, gold to gold bag, so on, all the way up to a vault. And there was an achievement for having two vaults on the board at the end of a game. This achievement alone was probably the last like 50 hours I played of this game. I tried so hard almost every day to get this and it just would not work. I'd love to have this achievement, but I, I can't go back to that life. It was fucked up. Gems of War changes a man. Minecraft launcher. Hell yeah, brother, phase up. Evil Within 2. I'm a cheaty little piece of shit, so I don't really count this one. Uh, a while after the game came out, they added cheats for one-shot kills, invincibility, and unlimited sprint, except none of these disabled achievements. So you could run through it in like, I think it was like six hours. It is very fun though. You should absolutely check it out, maybe without cheats, because it's just a fun game. Enter the Gungeon. Clearly I mastered it. I mean, come on now. Oh, fuck sister location. You got games on your phone? There's one night in particular I think it's the fourth night where you have to prevent a bunch of screws from loosening if any of them do you die But the controller sensitivity is so low that it is just impossible to keep up with them near the end They may have fixed it now, but it was just unplayable back then outlast another great game not really a good sequel, but this one, very good. There's one achievement here in particular where you have to beat the whole game on insane mode without reloading the battery. Insane mode, by the way, is permadeath. Every enemy kills you in two hits, except for the boss type enemies, they all kill you in one. I think the furthest I ever got was when Chris Walker chases you in the outside section, but either he killed me or the wall rider killed me in the very next section. Memory's a little hazy on that one. My heart says this would be a fun video, but the gameplay says otherwise. I can't imagine you'd want to see a black screen for like 20 minutes straight. Maybe I can do some tricks with Gamma though to make it where you will actually see the game. RE3 is probably the weakest entry of the new games. It's still very good, but it's unbelievably short. Beating it the first time took about six hours? And once you know this game even a little bit, you can beat it in an hour and a half. I really wish they made it longer, or at least added some DLC like RE7 or 2 Remake. But the early Nemesis chase sections were really strong, and I felt like they were even more intimidating than Mr. X. So at least they could have leaned into that more. Tiles was pretty fun, actually. I really enjoyed this one. It's a, it's a really small, quick, simple game, but the difficulty ramps up a decent bit before the game's over. You have to clear all the blue blocks on the map before exiting the level on the red one. And there's a few special blocks that stay there forever, blink in and out of existence, and disappear altogether after a certain amount of time. I'd really recommend this one, and if you want this achievement pretty quickly, I actually made a hundred easy levels for you to knock it out in like 10 minutes. Oh shit, it's Minecraft! What did they do to my man Steve? Defense Grid and Defense Grid 2 are such great tower defense games. Although for the record, I heavily prefer Defense Grid 2. Most tower defenses have a set route that the enemies take, but with these, you can put your towers wherever you want on the field and they'll just take the shortest path they can find. It's it's so good, it's so fun, it's so versatile gameplay, especially as a tower defense, which naturally is pretty limiting. I heavily recommend both, and I think the first one even has like a, uh, a portal DLC where you're fighting with or against GLaDOS? I never got it, but it seemed like it was interesting and it's probably pretty funny because GLaDOS is a wisecracking asshole. I'll totally do a video on this if I can make it look exciting. Ooh, BTD5, I almost finished this one. Wow, I don't have the random missions, who'd have thunk? Especially since I have to beat 250 of them. 
Oh god, the short-lived challenge. Whenever you put down a tower, it will die in 10 rounds no matter what. So you have to constantly do this like ship of Theseus thing, balancing how much you invest in each tower and putting them down far enough apart so you don't lose a bunch at the same time. My, my brain just wasn't wired for this, and I'm pretty sure this was the exact achievement that made me quit the game. <laughs> Binding of Isaac. I played this game so, so, so much. Azazel is my favorite because I'm a little bitch boy, and I could use him until the end of time. Let me know if you'd enjoy a video on this, I'd be totally happy putting in a couple hundred hours to finish it and getting my ass kicked playing as the Lost. <sighs> hey, the witness again! And if you'll notice, there's only one achievement I don't have. I'm telling you, it's hard as shit. Good video. Black Ops 4 had such a strong set of zombies maps for me. And, and one thing to know about me, after I've given the game its due respect and played the campaign, which Black Ops 4 doesn't have, cringe. I will always go straight to zombies. It is by far my favorite game mode in COD. And Black Ops 4 is the best for that since it didn't have campaign. They started with I think four zombies maps. Maybe maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe it was only two or three, but I think it was four. I got some pretty rare achievements in this too. It's been so long ago and I'm such a god gamer that I couldn't even tell you how they went, but I never got the big boss in nine, so I'd really like to do that if it can be done solo. If not, well, I guess I'll just have to figure out how to get a party together. Oh, and I completely skipped Blackout, but I suck at Battle Royale. My first and only win was in a squad game, and when we won, I was the only person in our squad that was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't die in the final fight. I died. I died to the boundaries, whatever the hell the nomenclature is, in the fight before the final fight. They carried my ass to this achievement, and I love the hell out of them for it. Emily wants to play too. A pretty good indie horror game that I'm sure you've seen before. Markiplier and Achievement Hunter covered it back in the day. Rip in peace. It's overall pretty easy, but the freeze tag part is so much harder than everything else. You have to tag all of the different monsters to freeze them, but two of them can unfreeze others, and on top of that you have the clown. The clown can freeze you. If he looks at you before you get to him, you're frozen for like, like 10 seconds, and he walks away scot-free. It was so annoying, but I did get it after a few tries. I, I think the game took me five hours, and like this took me three hours. <laughs> Infinite Warfare is so damn good. The campaign is easily my favorite COD campaign, which I know is a little bit of a out there uh, opinion, but it was just outstanding. I'm 100% doing this for the channel. I might also do the zombies, although if I remember correctly, Spaceland was one of the weaker zombies for me, so I'll see if that'll be in the video, but you can definitely expect campaign achievements. Oh, Pac-Man 256 is such a good game. It's a uh, infinite scroller and you're basically just playing a Pac-Man game while dodging ghosts and the glitch that's on your ass the whole time. There's like a bunch of power-ups too and the only achievements I don't have is for getting every power-up and maxing out every power-up. The reason for that is the achievement for getting every power-up is bugged. I can't remember exactly how it went, but when you unlock the last collectible, the achievement won't update and it won't unlock. I think there are ways around it though, so if you want to go for this game, which I would recommend, make sure you look up a guide on how how to specifically get that achievement. <laughs> Look at that. 4%, 1%, 2%. These things are gonna be on my gamer card forever. Oh, I bet it wounds you, you completionist. I'm never gonna play them again, you fool! Oh, look at this! I did Evil Within twice! Oh, and I even beat Classic Mode before the cheat codes were introduced. See, this is the stuff that worries me. I got a 0.46% achievement, beating the whole game on Hard Mode with only 7 saves. I played this game for 56 hours, and I have absolutely no memory of doing this. My mind's going in my old age. Oh, the Gears of War 4 Horde Mode days. I, I literally dropped $100 on card packs to boost my abilities, and I still didn't get all the achievements. Don't gamble, kids. I'm pretty sure getting to wave 50 on the higher difficulties is actually impossible solo, and I will die before I play with randoms, so this is yet another game where I'll have to find a squad that's willing to sit down and play some Horde Mode. Black Ops 3, although it had a really weird campaign, which I actually kind of respect, because they tried to go in a different direction with their story, that was a little more mind-bending. Had some outstanding zombies. Shadows of Evil was so cool in its style and story, and it, it just felt so good to play. And 
I got some pretty rare achievements, thank you very much. Although, I didn't get the rarest one, Personal Decorator, where you have to earn all decorations. One in 10,000 people have this achievement. Most of this is due to how long it takes to get and how hard it is, but there's the added element of potentially getting a bug that no one knows how to avoid that will make the achievement literally impossible to get forever. Completely ignoring that, it'll take 40 to 80 hours, according to Left for Zanage, who wrote a fucking manifesto on how to get this achievement. It's the ultimate test of patience and skill in Black Ops 3, and I fully intend to get it, assuming I don't get shafted by the glitch. Call of Duty Black Ops, definitely a top three Call of Duty. I'm tempted to say it's number one, but again, I really love Infinite Warfare. It was the first time they had good zombies, because while World at War started it, it, it was too simple and kind of boring. I knocked out pretty much every achievement, except I never got the DLCs for Call of the Dead, Shangri-La, or Moon. So actually a pretty good chunk of zombies I never got to explore. It'd be great to try them now, but the DLC is still full price after almost 13 years, so I'll be waiting for a discount. Oh god, Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. Let me tell you something about Mint Muffled during the Enigmatic Elk days. I was a Dynasty Warriors fiend. I love these games. Back to like Dynasty Warriors 4 for the PS2. This is 100% my guilty pleasure series because I'm, I'm pretty sure they aren't that good from an objective sense, but I have easily put hundreds of hours in these games. Dynasty Warriors 6, I tried to get every character to level 50, which it takes like 40 hours on its own. What you would do was get Lu Bu to level 50. Everybody remembers Lu Bu with his classic Lu Bu line. Can anybody provide me a decent guy? and then get a second controller for split screen. Make the character you want to level player two. Uh, you did some, like the Battle of Sunsei. No, Sunsei was the enemy general. You put that level on Chaos, and then you clear the level in like five minutes because you're Lu Bu, and you got like eight levels on the other guy. Then you just do that like 500 times to level everyone up. It's the epitome of a tedious grind. And I only got through like, uh, like 20 characters before I called it quits. Mark my words though. Once I get an Xbox 360 again, this game game will be perfected. And every other Dynasty Warriors game under the sun. Ooh, maybe not. Rayman Legends, an amazing platformer with a lot of clever gimmicks, really cool art style, and quite a bit of difficulty near the end. All the achievements are great, except one. If you know the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Reach the final level of awesomeness. Once you've beaten the game and done everything there is to do, your awesomeness level will be at 10, with 4,184 out of the 6,000 points needed to get to level 11. And since you've done everything in the story, the only way to get the remaining points is with getting medals in the daily and weekly challenges. If you want to do this in any tolerable amount of time, you'll have to get diamond or gold medals. If you only got silver, it would take almost six months to get. On the other hand, if you only got diamond, you'd be done in just over two weeks. Unfortunately, you have to get in the top 1% for diamond, so you're probably only going to get a few of these, and you're mostly going to get gold medals. That'll put you in the only somewhat depressing three months time frame. And that's it. Once everything else is done, it's just a slog of making sure you get your daily Raymond session in. By the way, if you only get bronze medals, it takes like two years. Evil Within is such an amazing game. If we're talking just the campaign, I probably like two better, but with DLC, Evil Within totally takes it. The assignment and the consequence are genuinely they're like top three most fun I've had playing a game. I could not explain to you why if I tried but that DLC like spoke to me in a way that just blew the main game out of the water. I didn't play the Keeper DLC but it does seem like it was just as good. It definitely doesn't have the same vibe as the rest of the game. Pretty similar to Jack's 55th birthday in RE7 but it looks really fun and I would love to play it. And hey looky here I never beat the game on Akumu. Looks like a good video to me. Shadows of the Damned is a great game. Oh it's so good. Good. Shadows of the Damned is my shit, brother. The only thing that was annoying, and this was a pretty big oversight on their part, is that the difficulty achievements didn't stack. So you had to beat the whole game four times to get all the achievements. But it's so fun, so funny, and it's actually the first game ever, fun fact, to have a big boy curse word in an achievement title. If you haven't heard of it or played it, you should get on it now. I love this game. Get five kills with the hot boner. Oh, never change. Avatar the Burning Earth. Very hard. Don't attempt this one unless you've got just abnormal patience. 
I don't even want to open it up. I'm going to get mad again. Wolfenstein The New Order. Love doing this completion, and I'm sure I'll love doing the sequel just as much. It's going to be just as much fun, right guys? Miss Pac-Man can get it. Oh my god. Bionicle Heroes. This game is not hard at all, but it is so fun. I've played with Bionicle all the time. I had a big plastic tote where what I would do is I would buy a Bionicle, I would build it the way you're supposed to, look at it and go, hey, that's nice. And then I would take it apart and throw it into the peace pile. I did that with, how many did I have? I had like 14, 16 Bionicles by the end of it. A bunch of the normal guys, but I also had a couple of the big ones like uh, Makuta and Brutaka. Dude, I love Bionicles. They're collector's items now, so unfortunately they're kind of expensive to buy, but I would love to get another Bionicle collection. Oh, look at that. Very similar to my experience with Crash 3. I got screwed out of the All Achievements achievement. Oh my god. Soul Calibur 4. Play as Yoda, who can't be hit by most mid attacks or any high attacks. As far as fighting games go, I probably have the most time in this one. I, I have a vague memory of playing as Nightmare and swinging that big fuck off sword, hoping that you don't get hit while you take four hours to wind up. And hey, playing as Ivy 2 to, well, just to get better at the game, really. Gears 2. One achievement! That's a disgrace to <laughs> Gears Assassin 187. Before I had this account, <laughs> there was the very first one I had that was unfortunately lost to time because we didn't have internet back then and it got the red ring of death. But I used to be Gears Assassin 187. Actually, I was Assassin Man 187 because, because I was a cool kid who didn't play by the rules and I had a switchblade that helped me rabble rouse. But I changed it after I started playing Gears 2. And now that hard drive is in a landfill somewhere. Oh, Black Ops 2! Alright, time for the real fucking games. Oh, obey the voices in transit. Oh, 10 years ago. New Year's Day. Oh, man. Running zombies during Christmas break at like 2 a.m. with the homies. This was a great night. Armored Core 4. We're really in the deep cuts now. I was a FromSoft fan before they were the powerhouses they are today. You might even say I made them. Being able to modify every part of your mech, making like anything between a super speedy glass cannon to a literal tank with arms, was some of the coolest shit I have ever done. I'm actually amazed I don't have all the achievements in this game. I owe it to my teenage self to get every achievement in this game. And you are going to get an Armored Core video whether you like it or not. Yeah, Doritos Crash Course! Oh, we played this all the time. It wasn't anything achievement related, but we really dialed in on the first level of the game and tried to get as good a time as possible. I can't remember how high I got, but I was definitely top 1000 by the time we were done. Maybe maybe like 700 something? Oh, that, that actually sounds like a lot of fun to do a leaderboard climb again. I haven't tried to do that seriously in a very long time. Oh. Here it is. And here at the very end of the list, we've got three Connect games. Connect Adventures, The Gunstringer, and Fruit Ninja Connect. If you're wondering why it's all Connect back here, when I first got Xbox Live for Christmas nearly 12 years ago, it was also the first year we got internet, which was great, but with the two expenses of gold and internet, there wasn't really a lot of money left over for a $60 game. Except Gunstringer, apparently. We did pay for that. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not complaining. All of these three were super fun, and it was pretty nice actually to be active while I played. I should try and do that again with like the switch or try and find a connect god willing and i even managed to get some pretty rare achievements in my young age but easily my favorite of the three was gunstringer it was this like old west shooting gallery game that was poised as a theater performance i think where the main character aka you is a marionette i think he's looking for someone that put a curse on him throughout the whole game and when he gets to the end he finds out that the whole thing is a game and he's still being controlled so he ends up firing on his creators all the developers of the game and then at the very end I think he turns to the screen and shoots you. It's it's such a weird meta game but it's so cool. It'll be pretty difficult to play this but if you do happen to have a connect to dust off, a 360 connect even, you absolutely have to give this one a try. And that's it. We're at the very end of the list. In memory of Gears Assassin 187, I should mention the achievement list that we can't see. I got most of the achievements in Gears 2. Uh, I got 
I, I remember it very clearly for some reason. I got 720 gamer score in Army of Two. I got all the achievements in the first Assassin's Creed, except maybe the Feathers. And I got every non-online achievement for Halo 3. So respect to Gears Assassin, you will be missed. Now, I know I mentioned a lot of video ideas in this video, but I'm really excited to do all of them. So I'm, I'm actually very happy I did this. It's given me a lot of direction on how the channel is going to move forward. But with that said, I'm also planning on doing some stuff outside of Xbox, like 100%ing older games between like Nintendo to PS2, uh, doing challenge runs like Pokemon Nuzlocks, and learning to speed run like doing Super Mario 64 as 16 star. I'm really excited for where this channel is going to go, and I can't wait for you guys to see what comes next. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed and want to watch me go for some achievements instead of just talking about them, check out this video right here. And if you made it all the way through the video, you must really like hearing me talk. I just wouldn't shut up.